local breaking news. This is WYFF News 4 at 6 in high definition. We are going to begin tonight with some breaking news out of Union County. Emergency management officials right now tell us they are watching a landfill fire. The fire is in Bennett in Chester County. Sky 4 is over the fire. Lockhart in Union County is the closest town to this area. Emergency management tells us it's continuously monitoring the air quality around the fire scene and in Lockhart. They tell us teams with DHEC and the EPA are also on the scene. We're watching this, of course, for you as well. Uh, no airborne danger so far, we're told, but emergency officials say people should be prepared to take cover just in case. We're working to get you some more information. Now look for updates at WYFF4.com and WYFF News 4 at 11 o'clock. More breaking news tonight, this time out of Spartanburg County. Deputies arrested Mark Bradbury. He is charged with murder and armed robbery. Deputies tell us he killed his mother at home on Montgomery Avenue. The coroner's office identified the woman as 69 year old Connie Bataille. The investigation is still going on. Police have yet to determine the motive in the case. Again, we're gathering information. Keep uh, yourself posted on WYFF4.com. Well, the comeback may be over for Marcus Lattimore. The former Burns High and South Carolina running back decided tonight whether to keep playing football. Or retire. It is a decision the entire upstate is waiting on. Joining us now is Mark Dover with the very latest on the San Francisco 49ers running back. Mark, what's going on? Yeah, Carol, this story really evolved throughout the day. First, ESPN reported uh, this morning that Marcus Lattimore was set to retire from football. His agent then denied that report, saying he's still weighing his options. News 4's Ricardo LeCompte is live in Duncan with the latest on the former Burns and South Carolina All American. Ricardo. Yeah, Mark, that's pretty much the same uh, story here. Uh, we heard this afternoon from 49ers head coach Jim Harbaugh that he's going to sit down with his family uh, either today or tomorrow or sometime this weekend uh, before coming to a final decision of whether he's going to retire or continue playing football. Now, Lattimore's uh, comeback from a second knee surgery would almost seem complete as he returned to practice last week with the 49ers. But, of course, that was lived short as he suffered a setback and wasn't even on the sidelines for the game against the St. Louis Rams. Now, word of Lattimore's potential retirement spread around the upstate, and Lattimore's high school head coach at Burns, Chris Miller, thought Lattimore will succeed in life after football if he does decide to hang up the cleats. There's so many different things I'm sure that he can uh, get into because of uh, his work ethic and, and what he does. And, um, you know, I'm sure there'll be... Plenty of people out there that would want uh, Marcus on their side. Now, of course, we're expecting a decision of what Lattimore is going to decide to do here in the next coming uh, coming days. And when that happens, we're going to pass that along on air and online at WYFF4.com. For now, live in Duncan, Ricardo LeCompte, WYFF News 4. Uh, Ricardo, thank you. Commitment 2014 for you now. Election Day is tomorrow. We want to make sure you're ready. South Carolina will elect a governor, but the U.S. Senate is gathering a lot of national attention, especially in North Carolina. Nationally, Democrats are trying to fight off Republicans for control. Right now, the Democrats have control by eight votes, but that could all change come tomorrow. And two of the close races that could make the difference will be decided by voters in North Carolina and in Georgia. Don't forget, South Carolina now requires you to have a valid photo ID before voting. You will need one of the following, a photo ID issued by a DMV or a passport or a military photo ID or a voter ID card with a photo. It's a lot to think about and for some the very thought of voting can seem a little daunting. Tonight, WYFF News Force Allison Powell walks, the through, walks us through what to expect tomorrow at the polls. A simple process that can be confusing, especially for first time voters. Conway Bellagia, director of Greenville County Board of Elections, explains. Polling place manager will activate the machine for every voter. First on the screen is an instruction page, and it's basically how to touch the machine, how to move from page to page. Most people, knowing having voted before, will just press their view ballot button and move directly to their ballot. You then make your choice by placing your finger on the check mark beside the candidate you wish to vote for. So you changed your mind. You decide, well, I, I really want to vote for the other selection. You could press this again and it will cancel, and then you press your other selection and it will come up. If you fail to vote for every office, the machine will alert you, but you do not have to fill in every ballot to continue. Once you're finished, there's one last important thing to remember. Belangio says when you see this flashing light like this, that's the most important page. You have to remember to confirm your vote twice. Try to be patient at the polls. Belangio says they're expecting between 130,000 to 180,000 people in Greenville County tomorrow. Allison Powell, WYFF News 4.
Now, the voters in Greenville County are going to decide on a penny sales tax tomorrow. The tax is expected to be used to pay for a road and bridge work throughout the county. The list covers roads and bridges that are in the most need of fixing. Oconee County also has a sales tax hike on the ballot. That money would pay for nine projects if the voters approve, including a new YMCA and a new Seneca Library. You can see the entire proposal, by the way, before you vote right now on WYFF4.com. And just head to WYFF4.com or the mobile app for everything you need to know to cast your ballot. You'll find it all at the top of the home page. Uh, lots to uh, look at there, including finding your polling place, sample ballots, a touch screen, voting demo, and candidate information for both Carolinas and Georgia. Now, the voter turnout tends to be lower during a midterm election like this one, and the experts tell us that turnout could help decide some of tomorrow's races. WYFF News 4's Tim Waller has a look at voter turnout in South Carolina during the last midterms. Tim? Well, this is pretty amazing, Michael Carroll, when you compare voter turnout in the 2010 midterms to the 2012 election when voters were choosing a president. We're talking about a night and day difference here. Check this out. Four years ago, November 2010, only half of registered voters in South Carolina showed up to cast their vote. Now, compare that to the presidential election two years later, 2012, when two-thirds of voters in this state turned out. So there tends to be less enthusiasm during the midterms. White voters were more inclined to vote during the last midterms than non-whites, 71 percent compared to 29 percent. More female voters went to the polls in 2010. 55 percent compared to 45 percent men. And which age group had the most presence four years ago? People 45 to 64, representing 44 percent of voters in the 2010 midterms. The youngest age group, you see it here on the list, ages 18 to 24, barely a blip on the radar during the last midterms. We can't tell you how many people voted Republican, Democrat, or Independent in 2010 because in South Carolina you don't register by party. But the numbers here show whichever party is most energized tomorrow may decide the outcome of the election. Carol? Thank you, Tim. Now to the rematch between Nikki Haley and Vincent Shaheen. The 2010 general election opponents face off once again tomorrow in the race for South Carolina governor. WYFF News 4 is Gabrielle Komorowski is right here right now. Uh, Gabby, it was, this was a close race four years mm -hmm. ago. It sure was, Michael. Back in 2010, Republican Nikki Haley beat Democrat Vincent Shaheen by a margin of 51 percent to 47 percent. The latest poll numbers look very similar to the results four years ago. Take a look. According to Winthrop, the Winthrop University poll, 44 percent of likely voters said they would vote for Nikki Haley, while 34 percent of likely voters chose Vincent Shaheen. That same Winthrop poll conducted before the election in 2010 found 46 percent of likely voters said they would vote for Nikki Haley, and 37 percent of likely voters chose Vincent Shaheen. Both candidates have raised millions of dollars to fund political ads and campaign stops. Vincent Shaheen has raised more than $3.5 million in his second race for governor. The state newspaper reports that's about $500,000 short of the total that he raised in his 2010 campaign, but Shaheen's campaign could not confirm that today. Meanwhile, Nikki Haley's campaign reports the governor has raised more than $8 million in her reelection bid, and that is about twice as much money as she collected during her 2010 run. Michael? Gabby, thank you. Now, the Libertarian candidate Steve French and the United Citizens Party candidate Morgan Bruce Reeves are also on the ballot tomorrow. Petition candidate Tom Irvin, you may recall, dropped out of the race last week, and he has since endorsed Vincent Shaheen.